you can easily just go into the LCD functions and create this for any type of number, let's say floating point. All you would have to do is replace, well, we'd have to change this. Let's go ahead and do it. Floating point. Yeah. LCD send a floating point number, a floating point number. And this is going to have to change to float. And this can stay the same. Remember that the max digits needs to consider the, the actual decimal point and the negative sign if one is going to be there. And the next thing you would, we'd want to change, obviously, is the floating point number to be displayed. And we would replace that one. And the reason why I'm changing this variable, we don't really don't need to, but it's when we're actually writing the, using the function in the main file, or in the main code, it'll tell us what this is, what, what it's asking you for. So we want to make sure that we have that correct. And then this format has to change from D to F for floating point. You can also use the percent %E for the shortest representation of the floating point number. I'm not sure what that really means because I haven't really delved into that yet, but you can go look at the specifier for, for the printf under the ANSI C specifications, and you can see all of the output types for, say, integer, octal, hexadecimal, floating point, scientific notation, even pointer addresses can be shown. So you have the possibility of creating as many types of numbers or representations that you want. And it doesn't have to be just these two characters. You can actually create, uh, going to the next line, and all kinds of other types of formats that you want if you feel that it's necessary to put that in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this one and see if it works. I'm gonna change this to F, save the files, and maybe I'll go to the next line. So which one is that? Let's see. Send an instruction. Okay. Go to next line. Okay and then we'll send a floating point. Okay, and the number can be, let's say, 256.67. And then the max number of digits would be one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say 10. We have 16 to work with, but actually let's go ahead and put in something before that. So there's six, let's make, let's make this seven just in case there's more digits we need later on. And LCD send a string, and we'll call this float. Let's see if this works. Build, okay, length of digits undeclared. That's 183, let's see what we did wrong there. Oh, max length of digits, yeah. We have to do the same thing here. We change that. All right, let's save the files and do another build. And it looks like we have no errors. Let's go ahead and flash the microcontroller. Okay, we have 150 and you can see that the float, <laughs> it actually gave us a little few more numbers on there. So it's odd that it did a conversion and then added some more digits point 670013 and that's 10 digits and I only asked it to print out seven so I wonder what's going on there. After a bit of research I found that the function SNPrintf is actually a better function to use because it allows you to restrict this number of digits that it stores in this particular array using another input parameter. And I'm just using the max length of digits that I, I'm passing in anyway, which is going to be the size of the array. And after a little bit of testing, and you'll see on the next portion of the video, that adding the plus one will provide the correct number of digits for what you specify in this input parameter. I haven't 
use it in the integer function. I'm only using it in the float function. Since the integer was working in the previous attempts, I'm going to keep it this way until I see a problem where it is outputting something that I wouldn't expect. A really good indication of how well this idea works would be to actually show the numbers changing on the LCD. So let's try to do that. I'm going to create a for loop that counts up from 0 to whatever number. I don't know. Let's say we'll have well, the for loop. Let's just go to 10,000. What the heck? Let's see what happens. So we want to put the function inside of this loop. We don't need the go to next line. And we'll take these out to the floating point. We'll just show integers at this point. So we'll just replace the 150 with i. And 10,000 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five of them, but that doesn't really matter. 7 is fine. So let's go ahead and see what would... Oh, actually, we, we need a time delay in here, don't we? Let's do uh, 10,000. Let's flash the mark controller and see what happens. Oh, it's not clearing the display or going back to a specific place on the LCD. And that actually brings up a good point that we don't actually have a a command that specifies the location where the cursor should go. So let's do that. I guess for this small task, just to see what happens, we can put clear the display on here. But it could make it so it looks more like a ghosted image. So let's see what happens. OK, that looks like it works. The reason why you can see the number so clearly is because it first clears the screen and it sets up the display and then it shows the the it shows the integer on the screen right after the showing the inter, integer on the screen it does a time delay and the time delay gives it some time to show on the screen on the display and then it does a clear again